So yesterday we did the down sample and we can take a look at this again. No, not I render doc. So if we take a capture of this image right here. This is where we do the bloom in this uh, stage right here. We have an output image that is responsible for capturing everything that is supposed to be bloomified. Okay. And that is this image right here. And then uh, in the next following iterations, it generates a more blurred version. More and more blurred version of, you know, let's say the fire and the stars. And this is the latest image that we have. And we can use these images and merge them together to create a very strong and uh, smooth bloom effect and so this is what we are doing right here is we are down sampling the images right we go from very high definition down to very low definition mm, and now we need to do the up sampling now in order to do this we need the up sample which is another for loop and if I remember correctly, we just need to set float filter radius. We need to set a float and we need this loop and we also need to disable blending it looks like. So let's see how we do that in code. And I guess we can have the game running here. <coughs> hmm, how do we begin? Bloom down sample program, yeah. Bloom textures. <coughs> um, game frame buffer. Wait, game frame buffer. Wait a second. Ah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Bloom frame buffer. And then the Bloom program. Okay. So this is uh, down sampling. After we are done with this, we want to do up sampling. Let's see. We need first need to use not the shader, but the program. So we need a program that uses different shaders. So this is going to be the down sample program. Let's call it Bloom down sample program. Then we do a Bloom up sample program. Frame buffer. Uh, we might need a frame buffer as well. Not sure about this. Let's take a look at the up sample bloom. What do we have here? We have a vector for up sample. Oh, I see. It probably uses the yeah source texture. Then we have the edge. Uh, source texture is the same again. Then we have a float and an input. Okay. So how about this? Input. Input. Output. And it's called not down sample but up sample. Otherwise it's the same. We have the texture coordinates and then we have input buffers. And then the source texture, which is textures. Okay, and then this filter radius is supposed to be here, right? Let's hope I didn't destroy 
the shader. Let's double check that real quick. This is the, what is this? Upsampling filter radius. Okay, that is the only thing in here. Okay, now. In the main function, I don't know if we need to do something. Texture. Upsample. It looks okay. Other than these need to be vector force. And then we don't do dot RGB. Otherwise it should be okay. Okay, so as far as I understand, we have a source texture and an upsample texture. So this time it is the other way around. We go from the smallest all the way up to the biggest. So in the renderer, I don't think we need a new program for this. I don't think we need a new one because the old one, where's this, um, oh shit, oh no, uh, this is the down sample, program ID, it does a bilateral blur and up samples, yeah hello syntax, um, You have to do four. You have to do all of your vertex and fragment shader calculations for four extra times. Wow, that is expensive. It's not actually that expensive. Um, we can take a look at the frame in render doc. The entire GPU frame. All of this stuff together took 69 microseconds. Which is... Uh, what is that? How much is this? It's not even 1% of a micro, uh, millisecond. So it doesn't really take that long because it is so small. The calculations are done so fast because the image is so small. So if we do the same thing again, then maybe it's twice. It's 6.9%. No, it's not. Because it's a thousand. That is 2% here. The entire... GPU frame took 200 microseconds, which is if we have one millisecond. No, it is. It is 6.9% actually. Yeah, yeah, it is. That is 6.9% of one millisecond and we can take... 16 milliseconds so we are not even reaching one millisecond yet yeah yeah it is point being that this is very fast and we don't have to worry about it and it gives us a very go cool visual effect a thousand six hundred for 60 fps no sixteen thousand microseconds All right, let's see here. Geo draw arrays, bind vertex array. We don't bind any vertex arrays. And then we set the viewport. It goes from four down. Okay, so basically the this loop but inverted. So the first mip is uh, bloom mip levels minus one. Two bigger than zero. And then minus minus. Okay, now we have the MIP level. Um, MIP and next MIP. Okay, let's think here. <clears throat> 16, your mom. Your mom, bitch. Let's think filter radius. We need to set a float. 
for the filter radius. I don't know how that is computed. Uh, does he have it in the code? What is the filter radius? Filter Thank radius. Ah, oh, great. He doesn't say. He doesn't say the filter radius. is uh, filter radius <clears throat> how is x being used um, hmm. render bloom texture let's search that So 26 year bullet ball, I mean cakes the development going. Ah shit, you man bitch. Fuck up. Hello, push. <laughs> Source texture? Oh wait. Render up samples. Filter radius. Render bloom texture. Texture is for retrieving the texture handle for the bloom texture after bloom has been performed. This could, for example, be the 2D input for your tone mapping shader. The render bloom texture performs all the action. It binds the bloom frame buffer, then renders the down samples from the input source texture, which contains your HDR color buffer, then progressively up samples. Finally, it restores the viewport size and binds the default frame buffer. The only thing that we are missing are the two private methods which render down and up samples. I've done my best to add some comments. Except for the filter radius. For both methods, we are relying on quad VAO, which is created beforehand during the downsampling. We activate blah blah blah, run a loop. Each iteration, we change some parameters. For upland upsampling, very similar. Expect it does the opposite order. It starts from the low resolution MIPS and then works upwards back to the MIP chain. We'll start by fetching MIP chain, activate the shader for the filter radius. We are free to experiment. But I recommend a small value like 0.05. Then we enable additive blending so that we get so that we may perform the D's nuts blur operation described earlier by using additive blending d's nuts is equal to d and so we don't need to make a copy of these nuts in line b4 is the filter radius given in texture coordinates and not in pixels note the values mip next mip we write from mip onto okay so basically he recommends this okay filter radius size of the blur applied to the texture during the upscaling process so basically is filter radius the radius of the bloom? If I make it very big, it's b a bigger bloom. Is that it? Not a great emo. And uh, uh, Fran Bellet, thank you very much for uh, following. I appreciate it very much, man. Thank you. Okay. Mm, that means 
Oops, I didn't mean to do that. If we go to the renderer. Uh, we need to set a float. I hate that. GL set. No, GL. Um, oh God, what is it again? Uniform. Uniform one float location filter radius. Oh wait, really? We can access this directly. We don't need an. We don't need to get the location. We can just say um, 0.005f. What do we have to do? Float filter radius. Like this. Uh, does it ask me how many? Eh? GL float? Eh? What? What? Location. Okay, so basically GL context. I don't want to be like pigs. Can't use name, yeah. Gotcha, bitch. I think. Shut the fuck up, bitch. Fuck you, bitch. Fuck you. Fuck you. Filter radius. It's a GL uint. Filter radius ID. And then we do source SRC resolution ID. Gotcha, bitch. Uh, uh, to to Dev, thank you very much for following, man. Alright, so we have post processing and then down sample, and the other one is called up sample bloom, right? Up sample bloom, then we get bloom down sample program ID, bloom up sample program ID. Do we need a. Yeah, we need another program. Trail shader stamp, timestamp, that's bad. Bloom shader timestamp one and two. I guess we'll call it bloom shader. Bloom shaders timestamp. I guess we call it bloom shaders timestamp. Wait. Bloom shaders timestamp and bloom shaders timestamp here. And this is the up sample program. Let's move this up. Up sample program. And then up sample program, and this is not down sample, but up sample. Transient storage looks good. And then we don't get the screen resolution, but the um, uh, fuck, what is it called? Something something radius, right? Fuck, what is it called? Filter radius, filter radius ID. Hot reload, but have what are the timestamps for hot reload? Yep. Hot reloading stuff, exactly. Okay, so we have the up sample program and the down sample sample program now. And then we have an issue here, yeah, we don't need that anymore. Is this a dot? Yeah. 
And then we enable blending, function and equation, additive blending. And then we activate. This is wrong. It's got to be five. Right. Yeah. Binding five. So we need to use texture five here. Texture 5 takes the MIP texture. No, we don't have this MIP texture. Uh, we need to bind this. And then for the frame buffer, we use the Bloom frame buffer. That's fine. Bloom frame buffer. Yeah. How's Vulcan versus OpenGL? Vulkan sucks versus OpenGL because Vulkan takes too long to program any sh anything in, man. This was not possible for me to do in Vulkan, and I had two years of experience by the time I tried this. I have a couple of months of experience in OpenGL, and I'm doing this very easily. This stuff shows a lot of boilerplate code. Crazy. Christian on YouTube, bro. This is nothing compared to Vulkan or DirectX 12. Mm, it is a lot, yes, I agree, but comparatively, it's not really much. Okay, so wait. Um, we need to set the frame buffer texture. To wait, the frame buffer texture is where we write to. It needs to be plus no minus one. The viewport needs to be. Uh, wait, so this needs to be minus one. So that we get to zero, yeah, we write to the big one and then the viewport size. Okay, wait, let me think. Viewport size here. Wait, do we even use source size here? It's writing it here, okay. And this is the viewport size, okay. So we are writing to the smaller one. That's why the viewport is smaller. Which means if you are writing to the bigger one, the viewport needs to be bigger. Yeah. So... Viewport size. Let's call it viewport size here. Shut the fuck up. With your Scotland bullshit. Mm, then we also need to set the viewport. Alright, uh, the correct viewport is one bit shifted to the MIP level minus one, I think. If we start at the latest MIP level, then we need to do minus one. Yeah. So basically invert it. And then we set we bind the texture to write to as the next one. Right? Minus one. And then the frame no wait. We use the current texture and we write to the next texture. So we use the smaller texture here. And we write to the bigger texture. And then we draw. How does it look here? Uniform viewport frame buffer texture. Where's the uniform? Here. Oh, I see. We only set the filter once. So the uniform is outside. Then we enable blending. Blend equation. And we disable blending. Okay. That is fine. It's hard to write code sitting in... The mouth of a volcano. I think... We should have the upscaling as well. 
No. I'm probably going to get some errors when we are building, but I think we have it. Which means we have now almost come full circle with the advanced bloom technique. And the only thing we need to do is add that data on top of our image. That was fast. Probably doesn't work yet though. Thank you very much for subscribing, bro. Bumper locator is full. Yeah, okay. So the game is still running here. Yeah. Of course. Are you closing? Are you closing? Okay. <clears throat> okay. Let's see here. Can we run or does it crash? We can just run the game. Damn. Because the reason why I want to do this is because of the bloom. Because then I can make this effect on this attack, uh, bloomify that, L ma make it look really cool. The background is some of the windows look cool. On some of those windows. Windows? The background? What? Okay, but... We need to take a look if it actually works. So we have to start this in RenderDoc again. Let's see. The skill pop-ups maybe? Oh, actually, let's go back to the main menu. I need to find a way. Oh, wow, look at all of these texture viewer. Let's see what happens. Okay, so this is downsampling here. Oh, wow, look at this. It is upsampling now. Takes this as input and puts this out. See that? Is it just me? Or is this a little off? Lol? Look at this. This doesn't look like Bloom to me at all. This looks like it's just repeating the star. It looks a little bit like Bloom, but... You ha eh? Okay, so I... Uh, okay, uh, it's neat anyway. <laughs> it's not a bug, it's a feature. Like, see, this is what I'm missing from this, uh, uh, whatever that's called, you know. So we don't need to make a copy of D in this line. B force the filter radius given in, uh, in the texture coordinates on the pixel. It's not this... The value is MIP and next MIP we write from MIP into the next MIP, which is the first iteration, means the smallest texture in the MIP frame, and the next MIP is the second smallest. Again, we render to a second to a screen filled quad with the correct viewport size, and we're done. We disable additive blending. Yes. We, the code I provided here sets up the quad in case you need it. Results. We've been going through the important parts. No, the important parts are not done yet. What blending mode? What. What blending mode? What uh, operation do you use to merge this image now? Like in the post-processing shader? Where's the post-processing shader? Where's that? Where's the last 
draw a call to take the bloom image and add that into the game image. Where is that? Results? The results. <laughs> I'm just using the VAO as a global variable because I need the quad data in several places. You're free to do something better. Smiley face. And you should now have an overview of how the uh, how to integrate the technique into your own applications. Internally, I did not touch upon several steps. As what tone mapping operator to use, how to set up HDR, how to render geometry. This would be out of scope. You have full source at the bottom of the page, I believe. Hopefully the descriptions should be sufficient. The full source. Bloom render. Room render in it. Use program. Set use program. Return true. Render down samples. Render up samples. Render bloom samples. Geo frame buffer viewport. Restore viewport. Render bloom bloom texture. Render bloom bloom map. Main window hint make concurrent shader load texture frame buffer frame buffer texture to D generate render buffer bind buffer lighting info while should not close Shader, use view projection, set stuff, mm -hmm. model matrix, model matrix, projection matrix, light positions, uh, blur fragments with two pass Gaussian blur. Render bloom texture. GL clear. Render cube. GL clear shader bloom final use. I hate this, you know. I really hate this. Bloom final. Bloom none, bloom old, bloom new. Needs more classes. Case. Gotcha, bitch. This is so fucking annoying, man. Oh my god, man. Why even make a tutorial if you leave out half the stuff, man? Hongo, thank you very much for following. Oh man, this is really annoying. I can't just... Like, I know what I could do, but I, it's annoying. Post-processing, post-processing programming, a program ID, let's find that. Takes the post-processing fragment shader. And in here we can add in... the bloom texture i think that's what we use right oh, it's called bloom color it's bloom color mm -hmm. we are not listening listening to orgasm voices guys stop Stop. Okay. Stop it. Hmm. 
I think in the post-processing fragment shader... We should just be able to use this. Vector 4. Bloom color is texture. On the bloom texture, UV. And then we just add that as on top. I think we can just do that. Oh, we can. Look at this. It looks absolutely dog shit. It looks totally fucking stupid. You should reduce the sample offset value from 0 0.05 to something lower. You are reigniting my crave for OpenGL. Yep, same as before. Alright, I'm gonna change it. Then. And put this as something of the GL context. Actually, not the GL context, the render context. Wait, the, the render context, yeah. It looks cool, just not what you want. No, it looks like shit, man. It looks totally fucking stupid. My bloom that I had in my C++ Vulcan engine look 10 times better. It looks so fucking good. <laughs> and this is supposed to be an advanced method that is better? God. Guys. <sighs> Mm. No, Vulcan is not better. The method used before was much better. Mm. The method that I used before was a thousand times better. The code. Um, Come on, think. 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 What did I want to do? Oh, yeah. Called float render radius. Uh, No, wait. What is it called again? Float. Fuck you! That's what it's called, man. Shit radius. That's what it's called. I'm disappointed, you know. I was expecting I'm doing it perfectly. Exactly like they want me to, right? I'm disappointed, man. I'm just so disappointed in this. I thought this would be better. Okay. We can now control the shit radius in the game and see it. And also this radius is not based on single ones, but it's based on everything. Before, while well before I could define a bloom strength. I guess bloom was global. No, actually bloom was global. Yeah. It was a global setting. Looks like the downsampling doesn't really use the lower resolution textures. I assume this because very little details is lost from the final blit of the Bloom RT to the frame buffer. Well, I'm literally copying exactly the code. I'm not doing anything differently. I'm doing exactly what this guy is telling me to do. I'm doing it for pixel art though. So maybe that type of Bloom for pixel art doesn't make any sense. And I need to use the different... Uh, bloom that I was using before the different calculation for bloom where you had to define a vertical and horizontal Offset or something which would define the radius okay, What am I doing uh, update game
Life would be so easy if everything was well, was first try. True, I guess. But if you're following a tutorial on a website that is supposed to be the OpenGL website, you expect it to be a good tutorial, right? This doesn't use it at all. Look, I set it to 20 and it is not changing anything. This leads me to believe that this is not used. Yeah, let's see if this is actually used. Hmm. Maybe it's not. here somewhere right can I see the radius difficult to see the radius in the fragment shader right uniforms one variable source resolution Something is wrong here. There should not be a source resolution here. They should not, like, that shouldn't be the case. Something is wrong here. Okay. I did a problem. I don't know. Stop it. I did a mistake in the OpenGL code. It doesn't set this uniform here. Or the filter radius is not found correctly. The basic bloom tutorial from that scene uh, side has a bug. They overwrite the blurred buff on the next frame. The color data so it only works on the first frame. Maybe it's the same. I don't even clear the buffer. That is a problem as well. I need to clear... Yeah, I need to clear the texture. I totally forget that as well. Filter rate. Oh, this is a invalid number. It doesn't find the filter radius. This is a maximum int. Is there a GL invalid or something? Filter radius. Hello there, Takam Jakam, long time no see bro. How's it going, man? Hope you're doing good. You sign up sample ID. Thank you. I'm looking I'm looking at down sample ID. Yeah. Thank you very much. There was the mistake. Okay, then I'm a little bit confused with this one then. That's how about we don't do this. Please work, that would be great. Call GL inum get error. That looks good. Invalid operation, wrong operand count. Ah, oh my god, really. Do we get this again? Got 
How did you fix this the last time? Ruhe Modus, thank you very much for following, bro. How did we fix this the last time, guys? You remember? Fuck, how did we fix this yesterday? The shader bound. Wrong component count. How did we fix that the last time? Wait, are we using the program? Ah, we are not using the program. Hello, I'm working on a library management system in Python that uses OOP. The owner of the library will be able to add or remove blocks from a JSON database, handle all the members of a library and see what books they borrowed and if they returned them on time. It is my first intermediate level project I'm trying to get out of my comfort zone. Oh, that's cool. Books, not blocks. Oh, I see. Did I say block? Book from a JSON database. And how do you like it so far? You want to do something more with Python later? What would you recommend for creating browser games? OpenGL or something like HTML.js? Mm, HTML.js. That's what I would recommend because it's already on the browser. You have a lot of options in JavaScript. You can use a lot of libraries that help you. All right. Please tell me it works now. This is so bad. It's ridiculous. This is so fucking bad. It's ridiculous how terrible this is. Yeah, great. So the bloom that we used is dog shit, essentially. It's dog shit bloom. This is not bloom. Absolutely not. This looks like shit. It's terrible. Um, the reason why I'm saying this... Let me try if I can find an old recording. You can see a little bit of bloom here. You see this? You see this stuff right here? You see that? Like, I don't want to play the video right now. But all of this is Bloom, depending on the strength of the transparent object drawn. Come on, why are you lagging so much? You, you see this? Stuff like this, glow, looks so much better. Oh man, I'm so disappointed. Two days for absolute dog shit result.
God, I'm disappointed, man. For this? Like two days for this? Really? Isn't blow a glow just blur with additive blending? Yeah. But look at this blur. Look how pixelated it is. Oh man. I'm disappointed now. Also, what I notice about most of these things, you see how the blur is not even centered? It's all the way to the right. Like, what the fuck is this? Cakes, try this. Can you try reducing the MIP levels from 6 to something lower? Even lower? Okay, I guess I can. How much? 8? Wanna try 8? Can't you walk through the render dock, especially the upsample process? Can you walk through that? I can. I mean, higher, less levels? Oh, I see. Uh, yeah, sure. 4? Let's try. <laughs> Fine, let's try a different... No, 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 no. No, no, no. No. No, no, no. This looks bad. It's also too far to the right. It is offset. I don't know what this stupid Schweif in English is here, but it is not centered. There is more blur to the right than there is to the left. What is this dog shit? Who invented this terrible fucking thing and advertise it as something good? This is absolutely atrocious. This is terrible dog shit. And I'm not doing anything wrong because I'm literally copying the code over. Ah, man, I hate that. I need a small break. Also, I wrote misaligned pixels from lowest mid-level, mid-level. Maybe go back to Godot. <laughs> Shut up. I, I need to go take a piss. Be right back. God damn it. It's, this is shit. Yep. This is shit. Shitty method doesn't work. Sucks. 2014 presentation. Go eat a dick. You wasted two days of mine for nothing. Fuck you. I hate you. Alright, let's go back to normal blur. <laughs> 